So a few months ago, I bought myself a 3D printer, specifically known as the Anycubic Cobra Plus. And of course, let me tell you, this 3D printer did not come cheap. Oh my goodness! Squidward! Nonetheless, I was always very intrigued by the concept of 3D printing, and I found it really interesting, especially after using it to help make a product for my design tech internal assessment. Over this time, I've developed a moderate sense of how 3D printing works and the mechanics surrounding this hobby, and ever since, I've engaged in 3D printing nearly every single day. With that, I was intrigued to learn more about it, specifically the physics behind 3D printing and why it allows 3D objects to be created even in the first place. For this video, I decided to make another 3D object as a demonstration, and let me tell you, this takes a very long time to make. For anyone who's interested in 3D printing, patience is definitely key. What you're seeing now is a time lapse of me printing something. Most people should know what it is, but if you can't figure it out, you should know what it is when it's completely finished. For now, while that is printing, let's discuss the physics of 3D printing. Topic 1. Thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is vital to discuss 3D printing physics. Temperature and heat transfer, which are a part of thermodynamics, are very important specifically to control the liquefaction and solidification of 3D printing filament. Polylactic acid, or PLA, is the filament that I use for 3D printing. Being a thermoplastic, PLA doesn't have one specific melting or solidification point, but rather a range for which PLA will gradually transition into these different states. For PLA, this range is around 180 to 220 degrees Celsius for melting, and for solidification, it's about 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. Although there isn't a specific temperature for which these phase changes occur, the total energy required to undergo these transitions must remain constant for printing PLA. We can also describe this through latent heat since PLA filament moves mostly between its solid and liquid states. We can use the equation Q is equal to M times L to determine the heat, which is represented by Q and in joules, to undergo a complete phase change. The variable M demonstrates the mass of the material, while L demonstrates the specific latent heat. For PLA, the specific latent heat is about 93 kilojoules per kilogram. The type of material will alter the specific latent heat. For instance, ABS is another filament that could be used in 3D printing with a specific latent heat of 110 kilojoules per kilogram. Nonetheless, these values are vital to discuss heat transfer in 3D printing. The laws of thermodynamics are also represented in 3D printing. To explain further, the first law of thermodynamics states, for an isolated system, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but instead, it's transferred into different types of energy. In 3D printing, electrical energy is brought from a power source into the 3D printer, where, therefore, this electrical energy is transferred mostly into heat energy, allowing for the 3D printing nozzle to reach the 180 to 223 degrees Celsius range that we need in order for the PLA to melt. Afterwards, due to the second law of thermodynamics, heat from the PLA will move from the heated PLA into the cooler atmosphere. Since the bed of the 3D printer's temperature, which is 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, is lower than that of the nozzle, heat will then be transferred into the 3D printing bed. Overall, thermodynamics plays a vital role in controlling the heat of 3D printing. And with that, Let's move on to the next topic. Topic two, circuits, and a little bit of energy. We can explain circuits and energy in 3D printing through the use of electrical energy. As we know, electrical energy is the initial energy transferred into the printer. This electrical energy can be determined through the physics equation E is equal to P times T. In this equation, the total electrical energy used, represented by E, is equal to the product of the power consumed, represented by P and measured in watts, as well as the amount of time the 3D printer is turned on, represented by T and measured in seconds. To provide emphasis, this equation has a connection to both energy and circuits, and are both demonstrated in this scenario. Traditionally, the standard minimum power supply for a 3D printer is about 240 watts. To be more specific, this 240 watts is determined by multiplying the voltage, which in this case for the 3D printer is 12 volts, by the electrical current, which in this case is 20 amps. This means that for the 3D printer, it requires 240 joules of electrical energy to run per second. In about an hour, 
the 3D printer would have used 864,000 joules of energy, or 140,000th of the average power used per year by an American household. Regardless, this electrical energy is transferred mostly into heat and mechanical energy. Heat energy, as explained before, is used to heat up PLA filament. And mechanical energy, which is used in order to physically move the 3D printing nozzle. Since we're talking about energy, the conservation of energy does apply, which states that the total energy of an isolated system must remain constant. Pretty much the same as the first law of thermodynamics, but whatever. In our application of 3D printing, this involves the complete conversion of electrical energy into heat and mechanical energy, although mostly heat energy as explained before. Through equations, this can be explained by the initial energy is equal to the final energy, or the electrical energy is equal to heat energy plus the mechanical energy. Obviously, there are a few other energy types that factor into the total final energy, such as light energy for the 3D printer's user interface, but this is minimal compared to the other energy types. This diagram shown right now is a very basic representation of how the energy is transferred. And that, for the most part, are a couple concepts with 3D printing. And what you're seeing here is the final print of what we are waiting for. And lo and behold, it's a Minecraft sword. In case you were wondering, this print took about two hours to make, and overall it did come out pretty good, although there are a few minor tweaks that could be made when it came down to removing the support for the 3D print. To conclude, understanding the basics of 3D printing physics concepts is definitely vital to be able to use a 3D printer. Overall, 3D printing is a great hobby and an interesting and fun one to get into. For a final note, I'd suggest that any newcomer to 3D printing, they should understand the basics of why 3D printers work to be able to achieve great prints. With that, have a great day.